It's an hour and a half production that takes place every day and uses a wide variety of both people and positions to make it all happen. Hi, I'm Eric Wallace. And I'm Heather Holtz. It takes a whole day's worth of work to put together one evening's newscast. And now you'll get to see it all as we take you behind the scenes of 28 News. It all starts here at the assignment desk. These are the people responsible for collecting and organizing all the phone calls, faxes, and press releases that come into the station. An assignment editor will take the newsworthy events and stories and enter them into the computer system, making them available for anyone in the newsroom. The assignment staff also monitors police scanners and fire rescue communications round the clock to see if any breaking news is happening. Another way the staff checks to see if any activity is going on is by performing beat checks. Beat checks are simply a list of phone numbers to local fire, EMS, and police personnel. Phone numbers are called every two hours, gathering the latest information. The job here is important at the desk because all of the information comes to the desk. Um, this is the center of all information, from, like press releases, anything that the agencies have to tell us, like police agencies, public information officers. The desk is the center of all of that. And we relay all of that to reporters, to photographers, to managers, to producers, to editors sometimes. So this is kind of the center of it all. Each of the six daily newscasts has its own producer. A producer's job is to decide which of the stories will be in the newscast and when they will appear. A producer can also decide what graphics, b-roll, and sots to include. At some point during the day, the producers, assignment editors, and news manager will sit down and decide what stories should be covered and in which newscast. After deciding what stories the producer will include, he or she will begin to lay out the show on the computer system. When this information is all entered into the computer, the photographers, reporters, graphic artists, tape editors, and writers can all begin their jobs and prepare their material. After reviewing what stories will be used in the newscast, the assignment desk sends out reporters and photographers. A typical reporter for the evening newscast will be responsible for one package and possible live shots. A photographer will be responsible for shooting B-roll and shots to be used during the story read by the anchor. I think the important thing about having a camera on your shoulder is that if people begin to just see that camera as an extension of your body, they don't feel as though they're being interviewed and put on the spot. If you just have a conversation with them while that camera's on your shoulder, then, you know, in essence, you're, you're doing, doing the job as a photojournalist and not just as a cameraman. So, just a couple different roles that you, you take on. A tape editor's job is an important one. They're the ones that prepare all the video that you see during the news. By using the computer system, a tape editor can go into the designated newscast and look for any packages, voiceovers, or sots. By clicking on a story that contains video needing to be cut, an editor can read where the producer or writer has specified what tape number the footage will come from and how long the video should play. It's kind of cool to do something in your edit bay and put all the tape together. And then when you actually see it hit, hit air, it's kind of cool because it's like your thing. and You know that everybody sees it and no, they don't know what you're doing, but you know, you're doing it. It's kind of a cool thing. Video footage normally comes from one of three places. The archive tapes go back several years and editors are able to go back and use video from previous packages, sots, and voiceovers. Another source are the satellite feeds. A typical station will have at least two different news source feeds that come in every day from a national network such as ABC or NBC. We have continuous feeds every single day uh, from News 1 in, in, uh, out of New York, Atlanta, Chicago, all these different uh, areas across the country. So we're continuously relying on that plus CNN. Plus, if we want, say for instance, we want video from Los Angeles on a car chase, a specific car chase, we'll call them up and say, hey, can you feed us some video? Then they'll, you know, we'll set up a satellite window and they'll feed it over to us. So we always have feeds coming in, you know, continuously. The third source of video is video that was shot the same day or video that will be shot and come back to the station later. An editor places each piece of video on separate tapes that are used over and over again until the tape is full. The tapes are then stored in the tape room. Not only do the graphic artists at the station work on the newscast, the graphics department also works on advertisements, billboards, print ads, and various other creative pieces. The department uses high-end Quantel paint box systems and other desktop software, including Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. The graphics used for the newscast are stored on a still store drive and assigned a number. That number is then called up later during the newscast. Watch 28 News, next. About an hour before showtime, the anchors will begin shooting promos, teasing the 5, 5.30, and 6 p.m. newscasts. The spots are normally 15 or 30 seconds long and will include one 5 and 6 p.m. anchor and one 5.30 anchor. Since only one anchor is seen, the talent used for the promos rotates regularly. Your water is going to be treated a whole new way. 
The spots will then air before and during the newscasts. Before and after the promos, the anchors will sit at their desks and review the script. They will also work on various packages, promotions, and other duties assigned to them. Two anchors host both the 5, 6, and 11 p.m. newscasts, while two others host the 5.30. I get in about 3.30 in the afternoon and, uh, and work continuously uh, right on through the newscast. It's pretty fast-paced. Once you come in, you're starting to work on promos. We record those that run during the programming from 4 to 5, uh, promoting what we have coming up on the news that night. Um, you're doing a radio promotion, um, and you're going through all the copy for the newscasts. Um, and we're kind of like the... Um, uh, the gatekeepers, so to speak, the anchors are for the copy because producers and writers do write the newscast, but we, it is our responsibility to go through all of them before we ever hit the air. When showtime approaches, both the scripts and the rundowns are printed. The scripts are distributed to the anchors and are the actual words that will appear on the prompter. The rundowns are more widely distributed and are given to everyone in the control room and in the studio. A rundown is a listing of all the stories, shots, video, and cues that will take place during the show. Following an afternoon of preparing and pre-production, it's time to go on air. And just like pre-production, it takes many people working together to make the broadcast successful. Five, four, three, two... Live from the studios of ABC 28, this is 28 News. The teleprompter is what keeps the anchors looking at the camera. Using a two-way mirror, the words are reflected directly in front of the camera lens. The teleprompter controller sits at the computer and uses the knob that controls the scrolling speed. The same computer also sends out the closed captioning information during the show. The position of cameraman rotates from day to day. The job takes practice due to the many trucks and dolly shots used in the newscast. A jib is also used for more dramatic wide shots. Although the cameras are in the studio, the shading and color balancing controls are located in master control. Inside the studio is the floor director, who gives cues to the talent and cameramen. The floor director will also communicate with the technical director to announce any changes made within the show. Within the control room is the audio booth. Inside is the main mixer where all the volumes are controlled. Also inside are digital carp machines that play music with the touch of a button. During the show, the audio engineer will have both hands on the mixer and oftentimes can't reach over to play the music from the cart. To alleviate this problem, two foot pedals are used to trigger the music. Mic check, mic check. How many mic checks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Also located in the audio booth is the IFB dispatch, allowing the engineer to talk with any of the crew, anchors, or reporters. Outside the audio booth is the control room, which houses the video switcher, Chiron, the producer, and technical director. The technical director is responsible for calling out cues and instructing the crew. The video switcher is where all the video and cameras are fed and placed on air. Above the switcher are three monitors, preview, preset, and program. The program monitor shows what is on air, while the other two monitors allow you to set up the next series of shots. The producer will sit next to the technical director to ensure the show is running smoothly and in the given amount of time. The Chiron operator is also inside, calling up the graphics used for the show. The operator will retrieve any supers, bugs, and full screen graphics needed for the show. Tapes for the newscast are inserted and played in a different room. When a commercial break approaches, the technical director will communicate with Master Control, who controls everything that airs. The commercials are in standby mode and are already in designated blocks. When the newscast is faded to black, Master Control, using another switcher, will fade into the commercial block and fade back to the newscast when they're finished. During the show, the talent will read their news and then prepare for their next story. If the teleprompter fails, the anchors always have a printed copy of the script in their hands. Sometimes anchors may walk to various sections of the set, for example, next to a large monitor or the chroma key wall. That's the great misconception about uh, hard-working newsrooms is that the anchors just sit on the desk. For an anchor like myself or Linda Hurtado who reads a weeknight show and reports during the day, your day is extremely busy and um, anchoring is the, it comprises probably an hour uh, to maybe 90 minutes of my day. The rest of the time is primarily reporting. Before the show, we decide what we're going to put into the show. We have a three-minute hole. We do three sports casts a day. We decide what we're going to put in there. And then we watch the games that we're going to have highlights of. We go out on stories. We do interviews. I'll interview players. We'll pick sound bites. 
will assemble a six or seven story list, uh, story count list. We'll um, do a lot of computer work. I write the scripts, and then for when the show comes around, 5.50, 6.20, and 11.25, we go out there and we do our three minutes unless there's breaking news, and then we get cut. And sometimes maybe we only get like two minutes, 20 seconds, or two minutes, <laughs> whatever, you know. I spend a half hour looking at the forecast, getting everything together, maybe another hour preparing, and by then, we're on the air at 5 o'clock. And we're on from 5 to 6.30, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Hurricane season, totally different. When there's a storm, you could see us 18 hours of the day here. Producers, directors, editors, and a handful of others all work together to bring you what you need to know. And that's what it's all about, giving you, the viewer, the information you need on a day-to-day -day basis. Hopefully, we've given you a look at what goes into a typical day's newscast. I'm Heather Volt. And I'm Eric Wallace. Thanks for watching. Your life and my life may be completely different, but there are certain things that we all need to know. We try to find not just the obvious story, but something behind that story that everybody needs to know about, that's universal, that people can't live without that day. It's more than just news, it really is what you need to know. And that's what we try to deliver every day.